Welcome back to the Flying Knee Podcast, episode two. I thoroughly enjoyed doing the last one, and I'm excited to continue doing these. I appreciated the feedback, and if you were there for the last one, I appreciate all of you. As you know, this podcast is the podcast where I talk about just random shit. We're just here bullshitting. And I have a new producer, a guest person who will hopefully be here for the the you know the next um, foreseeable future. He's gonna be my my young Jamie. He look he's looking shit up and he's making sure the sound doesn't sound like dog shit. And uh, welcome Noah Hensman. Thank you, thank you. Great to be here. And um, so um, this podcast is um, it's my number my second podcast. And um, this is where I only I talk about some shit that doesn't matter, and uh, there's pa- jam packed topics to talk about here. Tons of shit going on in the world this week, and um, this podcast is available on SoundCloud and iTunes and YouTube. I will drop a link in the description to the SoundCloud and the I- Apple Podcasts um, versions of it in the description below. If you fuck with that, drop a like, comment, and subscribe on it after. You are done listening, and I appreciate all of you. Follow me on Twitter at Ryan underscore N-I-K-O-S-E-Y. That's my last name on Twitter. If you want to join the conversation, give me any topics you think I should talk about, all kinds of shit like that. And now we'll get right into the podcast. Man, I wonder to flip because I'm solid on my vocation. Switched up on my baseline. You switched up on your location. You were the one that said I had to move to make the payments. Now every time when I hit the avenue, it's a statement. Now all of these suckers got me on Malibu fake invasion. They using you as a puppet to receive their ordination. Seeing you as a youngin' who's confident and collated. They gon' eat you in your heart till there's nothing to be created. Welcome back, you silly fucks. Um, so this is episode two of the podcast, and I have a producer. This is Noah. You've already met him if you listen to the intro, and he's going to be just my look-up shit guy. What's going on? And um, <clears throat> also, as you heard in the intro music, you probably um, realized that it was an unknown um, independent rapper. He's a, a local guy. Also, my cousin, you know, is he's perfecting his craft, if you will. He's hustling, and I respect that. And I'm um, just trying to show some love to some of the local people, putting out decent pro- um, product. And uh, yeah, he goes by the rap name Linguistics. Um, I'll also link his Twitter in the description below. But uh, without further ado, we'll get right into the um, topics for today. Um, we got some bad news in the MMA world, and you're probably wondering, um, are you talking about McGregor Khabib? Is that fight on? No, that fight is still on. But I'm talking about the main event to UFC 230. We got Valentina Shevchenko versus, I don't even know her name, to be honest with you. I've never heard of her before. She, they're fighting for the vacant um, strawweight title. And probably one of the most disappointing um, main events that I've, I've seen in the past. That could pro- I, I would say that uh, this main event could be on like the not main event on uh, a fight night. Like It's a pay-per-view at Madison Square Garden. And it's a main event on top of Dustin Poirier versus Nate Diaz. That's fucked. I don't even know what to say about that other than that's fucked. Mm-hmm. Dana White just he sits there and dangles the fucking carrot in front of our head in, in front of our faces with John Jones coming back maybe, and then there then he just goes oh never mind. Um, not only is it not Sh- Shevchenko versus Jan Jacek, it's Shevchenko versus you know um, a much lesser fighter than Jan Jacek to say the least. You know, someone who I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen anything out of, and um, yeah, I just, I don't know what to say about that. But anyways, so bad news aside, I am, I've been making my return to the Iron Paradise lately, and um, you know, it's just uh, you know, I'm trying to get my lifts up and shit, um, trying to focus on the healthier side of things, even though I just ate a free Domino's pizza less than an hour ago, um. Yeah, and uh, it's just getting into the swing of things, trying to eat healthier, be healthier, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, tons of shit went down this weekend. Um, as far as music goes, for sure, last week a lot of music came out. We had the Young Thug Project, the Lil Wayne Project, and Logic's, Logic's album. And, Still um, waiting on Yandi. Yeah, 
Kanye is just he's doing he's pulling a Dana White and just dangling the carrot in front of our faces. <laughs> um, fuck. So I want to talk about all of those for sure. Um, I think we'll start with the Young Thug project. No, what did you think about that one? Uh, he had some pretty good songs. The first one was fire. Um, it kind of lost me after the the first or second song. It just all sounded the same. I completely disagree. I thought the, really? I thought the first two songs were uh, were the weakest ones. Really? I thought that when Black came on and he featured in that song, that was good. And the song with Jaden Smith was oh um, yeah, the Jaden Smith song was good. Yeah. And the song with Elton John, if you fuck with Elton John, I think he did that song, um, Rocket Man, Extreme Justice. And I thought really? it was one of the most ambitious um, rap songs I've heard this year for sure. Because I was just, I just wasn't expecting it. I just thought he he did um, a classic, legendary song, Justice, and. Um, yeah, I saw uh, Elton John actually said that he uh, would co-sign for that song. Yeah, I just don't get people act like Young Thug doesn't get his due or something. I don't understand yeah. why people act, people say, "Oh, people insult Young Thug." They say he's nothing. He's he actually not has this. a lot of respect. Yeah, from people a lot give of people. him so much respect. I've never I've never seen people diss Young Thug. You know, he does his thing. I'm not dissing Young Thug, but you know, let's let's be honest here. He's not a lyricist. I'll oh, never definitely come not. out and say that he's <laughs> got the best lyrics, but you know, he's creative for sure. You know he's setting the wave in a lot of, in a lot of ways. He's one of the one of the first, the beginning of like the mumble rap era, and I'd say he does it. He's done it. He does it some of the best. Yeah, he's very consistent in his uh, his beats and flow. Yeah, and um, yeah, he's got a style for sure. He sets he sets the tone. He's got a brand. That's something that I respect. If you have your own personal brand that you can, you know, focus on and start, people know you for something. That's yeah. That's what Young Thug is. And uh, the the Lil Wayne album did you listen to it all the way i through? did you listen to it all uh the way i'm not huge on the the second side of it but the the first side with uh yeah let I got, it fly and mona lisa yeah those were I got, fire. that's the travis scott song right yeah yeah i got um i got no nothing against lil wayne but oh, i got yeah, a quality bone, artist i got a bone to pick with lil wayne on this album really um 24 tracks is just too much yeah, I just, it started to fall off near the yeah, end. Yeah, I refuse to believe that if you're going to drop a, an album with 24 tracks on it, that any more than, like, eight songs are going to be memorable. Mm-hmm. So, like, when when artists put out songs, like, Chris Brown put out a 47-track album, and that was just so far over the top. <laughs> I don't think I listened to a single one. Okay, I like, I listened to maybe the first um, 15 tracks on that album, and, like, I just refuse to believe that anything more than, like, 30% of the songs are going to be memorable. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like I, th- I feel like most rappers they stick to the the basic do fourteen songs and there's a reason that fourteen songs is, yeah. is the is the main thing that people do or like, like Kanye is seven yeah like Kanye did an, seven Pusha T awesome, did seven yeah. Nas did seven and every song in the Pusha T album was fought was fire mm-hmm. like I liked every song yeah on it. that's what the thing I'm saying Lil Wayne shouldn't put out because I feel like when you have so many like um like lukewarm songs it kind of takes away from the project in itself yeah because like there's so much trash. I wouldn't even say trash. Like it's not like there's any songs. It's just filler songs. I wasn't skipping songs yeah. on the album. Like none of them were bad. But like there's there's so many songs on it where I'm like, I don't remember what they're called or what the hook is on that. And like, I don't know. I lo- like Mona Lisa was fire. Let It yeah. Fly was fire. But like, like the I don't do- know. dope song with uh, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, oh, man, that guy's He's that guy's quality. Cool. But um. Yeah, the thing is about this is I think it's just good in the way that it's uh he tied up a loose end of his career because everybody's been waiting for the Carter Five for so fucking long. Yeah, it's like a decade in the co- in the making. Yeah, he said he's been working on it for like six or seven years. So it's like the um the opposite of what Dr. Dre did with Detox, where you know they fucking they teased and teased that one and it's never coming out, and you know he kind of you know left no stones unturned in his career now. Like, I don't think that, it, like, the album itself does anything for his legacy, as in, like, it doesn't make him look better. It definitely doesn't make him look worse. Oh, but no. it, do, it does the thing in the way where it makes that he, that he has no no loose ends to yeah. tie up in his yeah. career. There's nothing, there's no, like, asterisks in his career. Like, as in Dr. Dre's Detox, it's like, oh, Dr. Dre has so much good work, but, you know, we, we should have heard Detox, and you never, and you, and you never let it go. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I got a lot of respect for Lil Wayne. You know, he... He comes out with, with good music, and you know the thing is, is people on Twitter are gonna keep saying like when I, his fans, he's got like he's got fans similar in in the way that Logic has fans, and like people who like Lil Wayne or like they, Eminem. Eminem's Eminem's different because it's kind of like he's he's on the um, he's so mainstream that like yeah. you get he ha- he'll have a song that's like a pop song, 
that'll be on the radio that people who a lot of the time don't like Lil Wayne or I mean like Eminem will come out and say that song's dope. Mm -hmm. Like people who who like Lil Wayne, it's like whatever he drops is gold. Yeah, seriously. Or Drake too. Drake Drake's okay. different though because he puts out like catchy shit. Yeah. It's like um, like Drake's a great artist in the way he puts out hits. He puts out a ton of hits, but like the stuff that aren't hits, that's forgettable. You know, like he puts out like really good music, but he doesn't put out like classics. Mm -hmm. Like I'll say that like Controlla and like One Dance, cla like those are probably classics yeah. and like soundtracks for like a summer, and like you you know people remember those songs in time to come, but um like Drake's other music, it doesn't really doesn't hold the candle, as far as I'm concerned. But um, anyways, Lil Wayne, he put out a great album, The Carter Five. I think he should just shorten it a little bit. Yeah. You know, cut some shit out. Cut some of the fillers out. Yeah. And um, next we got Logic's album. Did you listen to that all the way through? I did multiple times. So, it's um, it's been running in my car for the past whatever how long it's been out five five days. Has it been out? Uh, four. Four days, yeah. I've probably listened to Hundred Miles and Running like yeah, like seventeen times at least in the past four days. Yeah, I've uh, I've if listened you... to Wu Tang Forever like oh that song about ten, is ten, so ten to twenty fun. times. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you like Wu, T if you like the Wu Tang Clan, and if you've been listening to them for you know whatever seventeen years or whatever the fuck how long how long they've been around, um, if you don't get like the nostalgic feeling from when Raekwon comes on in that in that song, then like you mustn't be a fan because like. I was genuinely like surprised in the way that like it felt old, as in like it felt like classic Wu Tang, but it was kind of also like a new beat. Yes. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I was impressed because like not only like that was it phenomenal, like Logic like obviously holds his own, like oh with, yeah with the whole group. He started that song off unreal. Yeah, like he definitely like he set the tone for it. And, yeah. You know, it stayed up for the entire time. Like it was like out of ten from the start to finish for yeah. the entire song. Like when RZA came on, that was just goosebumps the yeah, whole time. everybody everybody bro fucking um 100 miles and running if you can get to the part where the trumpets where the trumpets come on in his and logic's last verse yeah um without he your slows speaker, it down without your everything. speakers being on fire yeah i don't know like like that shit was just so sick like how he's going like obviously ridiculously faster i don't even know what the fuck he was saying yeah but um yeah it was crazy it sounded like kind of like a bruno mars had like a bruno mars feel to it like in the beat with like the uh, the guitar and the trumpets coming on, yeah, and it very like, upbeat, yeah, like super upbeat, kind of like a seventies eighties feel, yeah. And I just thought it was super dope. And um, young um, YS four, that song was sick. The return was sick. Um, and yeah, just like I think honestly, if I'm gonna rank Logic's like albums, like from best to worst, I would say that Young Sinatra four is like one or two. Really? Yeah, I would say it's one or two. I would say. Have you listened to his original? mixtapes yeah yeah okay but i'm, I'm not counting the mixtapes okay, i'm kind of okay. like studio albums Just studio albums yeah um including bobby tarantino i'll rank them right now in my opinion i was thinking about this yesterday i would say young sinatra 4 i honestly could give it number one really but i think that over like, under pressure I, that's what i'm saying i yeah. think that if i if i give it some more play and i listen to it all through all the way through a little bit more i think that under under pressure has got to be number one yeah it's like every single song like i i know every lyric to every single song in that album but um, so I would say Under Pressure is number one, Young Sinatra four number two, The Incredible True Story number three. Yeah. Then Bobby Tarantino one, Bobby Tarantino two, then everybody. Yeah. And like. I felt everybody was kind of trash, honestly. It wasn't trash. It was just it was for a different type of, of fan, you know. Yeah. He got on the radio with some of the, with some of those songs. It was kind of like a, it was it was more conscious rap than anything. Yeah. He was just trying to set a message. He definitely uh, was preaching a lot in that album. Yeah, yeah. That, that that was his main point of that album. Yeah, and it didn't sound bad. It just wasn't like... Yeah, uh, it sounded great. It was just... Like the re-listen um, yeah. capabilities of that album weren't that great. Yeah, I think I listened to it once or twice. Oh, I mean, I've listened to it a couple times, but like as far as like make it into my workout playlist, there's nothing on there. Yeah, nothing on there. But um, yeah, Kanye West, he fucked us over again. I just feel like, what's the point of saying that you're going to give us a release date if you're not yeah. going to follow through? Because, like, he just dropped an album, like, the beginning of the summer, I think it was. And um, I wasn't, like, tweaking for a new Kanye album. Yeah, I wasn't itching. Like, I didn't need it. 
I don't know why you're gonna say that you're. But that you did get my hopes up for absolutely nothing, though. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, why are you even getting our hopes <laughs> up for this? I, don't even tell us you're gonna drop it. Yeah. Just do what Eminem did with Kamikaze and just yeah. put it out and say, "Hey guys, I'd be Elm came out last that, yeah. night. Elm came out last night, and um, that's it. And now all you did was you make yourself look like a fucking tool. Yeah. By saying that you're gonna that the album's coming out this day and it doesn't come out, he's like, "Oh, never mind. Tomorrow night." And then it doesn't come out, and he's like, "Oh, sorry, I'm in Africa now." <laughs> did you Did you hear about that? No, I did not. It said that it was pushed back because he's in Africa now. I was like, "What the fuck?" I don't give a fuck where you are. But fuck, like, um, yeah, he just disappoints. I got a, uh, you know, I got a lot of respect for 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 Ye. Yeah. But um, I just don't get, I don't get the point of saying he's gonna drop the project. Yeah. Definitely. Anyways. Tons of shit went down over the weekend as far as like the <laughs> combat fighting world. Um, Bellator 206 happened. I don't know. You definitely you probably didn't watch that, you know? I did not, know. Um, it was probably one of the best MMA cards this year. And that's like across the UFC and Bellator. Really? Who's probably, on it? Um, Rampage Jackson. That's the guy you, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. Gegard Mousasi and Rory McDonald was the main event. Okay. That was um, a super fight. It was Roy McDonald has the welterweight belt, and he went up to fight Gegard Mousasi for his middleweight belt. Mm -hmm. And um, Aaron Pico, I don't know if you've heard of him. He's like the the biggest prospect. You know, I hear Brendan Shaw on his podcast. He compares him to like LeBron James. Okay. So like when LeBron James was in high school, everybody was like, holy fuck, like this guy's going to be the greatest of all time. Yeah. Right? Aaron Pico is kind of in that light right now as far as like his um his potential. His fighting People ability. Just, like, yeah, people just talk so high of him, mm -hmm. like, coming up. They're saying, oh, he's the newest prospect. Like, watch out for Aaron Pico. Watch out for Aaron Pico. And, um, yeah, he did not disappoint. Like, he um, he had I – oh, he fought Leandro Higo. And that wasn't even, like, a – that wasn't even, like, a warm-up fight at all. Like, Leandro Higo's 18-5. and five, like, Okay. And Aaron Pico was going into a 3-1. and one. Um, And, yeah, he, he, he rocked him. And then it was, like – 45 straight seconds of Aaron Pico having him against the cage. I think that you could have probably, you might have been able to stop it at any point during that 45 second span. But, um, yeah, Aaron Pico ended up like rocking him and he, you know, he had him on the ground. Leandro Higo eventually got up and he, when he was on his horse trying to get away from him, he fell over and then Aaron Pico, you know, jumped on him. He was just going for the finish for like 45 seconds straight. And, uh, yeah, then it got stopped. And uh, also we had the Douglas Lima versus Korshkov fight. That's the first fight of the um, the welterweight Grand Prix, which um, 50 Cent came and he now is a Bellator partner. And the winner of the of the welterweight tournament is going to get a million dollars of champagne drenched cash out of uh, 50 Cent's pocket, which is pretty fucking sick. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I did not know that. Um, yeah, Fifty Cent. He was at the fights. He was watching. It's uh, it's interesting to see he's, you know, he's getting into the the fight world in like as in yeah. the MMA world because he was super into boxing and like mm -hmm. we know that because he was like into promotion with boxing. You know, he's got his ties with Mayweather. They're kind of not friends anymore. But I always saw him tweeting about Mayweather. Yeah, May. They're like in a beef when they were on the each other's good side. Yeah, yeah. Because like he was like they were buddies for a while, but yeah. some, I think it happened had something to do with like a girl. I think it had something to do with a girl. Bros before hoes. Exactly. But uh, I forget who exactly the ins and outs of that situation. But, yeah, so the winner of the welterweight Grand Prix gets a million dollars of champagne drenched cash. 50 Cent is paying it up. He also sold the, the his term get the strap from his his uh, his show Power. I don't know what Bellator is going to do with, with that slogan, yeah. get the strap. Like, I don't know, like what uh scott coker was was thinking he's like oh we need no one's bringing the strap to a fight so. i don't I understand that i don't really understand the purchase of that <laughs> that slogan for mma i don't know where they're going to use it but nonetheless yeah douglas lima fought Korshkov, and um it just seemed to be a shit matchup for Korshkov. honestly douglas lima's got sick movement Korshkov's a, a phenomenal wrestler but um douglas lima has got amazing striking and if you've seen the douglas lima versus rory mcdonald fight uh, Rory McDonald had a um, like a, a loaf of bread on the side of his shin as like a hematoma from the from Douglas Lima's vicious leg kicks. And I think he might be taking the title for most vicious leg kicks in MMA history, as in like he just he does so much damage the way they snap in there 
And um, Korshkov, like his movement was just cut cut down so badly that like he couldn't like really do anything to Douglas Lima. And Douglas Lima ended up getting him on the ground and slipping in the rear naked choke. He won by decision. That was a that was a good fight, fun fight to watch, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen for the rest of that Grand Prix because I honestly feel like at this point in time that the the tournament could go either way. Um, anybody could win it. I know Rory McDonald's favorite. I believe he's like a plus two hundred in bets for the futures, um, and it could honestly go either way. But uh, yeah, then next after that we had. A fight that going into it, I th honestly thought that you know, I could go my whole entire life without seeing this fight, which is the Rampage Jackson Vanderlei Silva fight. Okay. This, this was the fourth time they fought like, right. in their career, and they're both oh in their forties. Pretty sure Rampage is forty two. Yeah. Um, he came in there looking thicker than a Snickers, like he was fucking thick. He was looking like a beefcake on that. In <laughs> yeah, that I cage. did not see it. I wish I did. Um, Rampage. I think so. Vanderlei came in. He was like two twenty six. So it's uh, so it's the heavyweight obviously, and um, it's two five and up. Vanderlei came in two twenty six or two thirty maybe. Rampage weighed in at like two fifty nine, so like huge weight advantage for Rampage. Yeah. He was thick as fuck, and um, they th those those big boys went to war. Yeah, I'm not even lying to you. Like how many rounds did it go? It, it I think it ended in the second round. Really? It was uh it was a KO in the second round. Rampage won it. Um, yeah, so. I was delightfully surprised to see how that fight went down because I was not excited. Like, I honestly, that's one of those fights where I'm like, yeah, you can fucking keep it. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, but they went to war. They literally just sat in the pocket and threw bombs at each other. Eventually, Rampage just caught Vanderlei's chin and yeah. uh, he took the win. Now it's 2 2 in the series. And Beltor, obviously, they have to make a fifth fight happen now because yeah. the series is tied. And um, I'll definitely watch that one. It's just interesting because uh, they're old as shit. Yeah, like in their forties. I think you obviously you got to get that fight done soon. You know, you don't got much time. They're they're not getting any younger. True. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that was a good fight. I I'd give it fight of the night. If Bellator gave um fight bonuses for their cards, I would say that's fight of the night. Yeah. Next one is uh, Roy McDonald and Gegard Mousasi. Gegard Mousasi is much bigger than Roy McDonald, and uh, it was shown in this fight. Gegard used to fight two hundred five. And now he holds the belt at 185. Rory fights 170, came up to 185 to fight a guy who used to fight 205. And I feel like um, it was just the cards were stacked against him. I couldn't see this fight go any other way, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I was kind of like a situation where I'm hoping for the best but expecting the worst. Like um, Rory McDonald's a fellow Canadian. You know, I got a lot of respect for him. If you watch the Robbie Lawler Rory McDonald fight, have you seen that fight? I think I have. It was the greatest fight in UFC history. Like if you like Roy McDonald's um, nickname is the Red King, and you genuinely learn why he's called the Red King from watching that fight. Is that when he gets put in the the rear naked choke? No, he gets it. It's just a war for I think it's it's a five round fight, and um, it goes for four rounds I think, and um, it's just both guys are bloody to all hell, okay. and like it's just two guys who like basically d don't give a shit. Don't give a single fuck. Like the most, like it's impossible to break Roy McDonald's will, and Ro and Robbie Lawler is just a fucking machine. Yeah. Like um, I think I did watch this fight. And like, there's the part in between the I believe the second and third round where Robbie Lawler, you can see his lip. First of all, it looks like someone took scissors and cut his. Oh, lip. right here. Yeah, and um, yeah. So and then he spits, like he spits blood in a stare down, in like like standing across from Roy McDonald at the end of the second round. Yeah. And it was like. Like, that was probably the most badass moment in UFC history. Like, two guys, absolute, like, warriors. Yeah. That's the definition of warriors right there. And yeah. Anyways, back to Roy McDonald. I just have a lot of respect for him as a fighter because he's a warrior and you can't break his will. And he's a fellow Canadian. So, I was really hoping that he could get it done for his own legacy. People act like since he's in Bellator, like, his uh, his belt doesn't mean as much. Yeah. But um, I think that if he goes and beats a guy who used to fight at 205, being much smaller and holding two belts in Bellator, I think that's got to mean something. Yeah, for, definitely. That's got to mean something for the like the validity of his career, and um, as being a two belt holder and being one of the best welterweights in the world. And um, yeah, don't even like let's not forget that he beat Tyron Woodley, who's the current UFC welterweight champion. Yeah. And um, yeah, so Roy McDonald. It starts off with uh, Gabriel Musasi is just snapping the. The most vicious jabs I've ever seen in an MMA fight. He's literally just letting letting the jab like go on Roy McDonald's face, and it seemed like it was clearly bothering Roy McDonald. 
he couldn't get in close at all and Gegard just literally had it from beginning to end it, it lasted until the second round Rory McDonald shot for a a late I guess a lazy single leg and uh, once it got to the ground Gegard just went and ground and pounded him to the TKO and that was it so uh, Gegard gets the win he holds his belt I didn't expect anything different I was hoping something different but I didn't expect anything different and uh, yeah so I'm excited to see what happens for Rory in the future though hope he's not out too long I guess I think he broke his nose but um, hope he's not out too long because he's got to fight the welterweight Grand Prix and um, yeah so next we have UFC 229 the, the biggest fight of all time in the UFC yeah. uh, ever like no questions it asked really I don't is. know what the pay-per-views are gonna look like I have no idea what the pay-per-views are gonna look like but um yeah so it's gonna be the biggest fight of all time I think most viewership for sure yeah but it's gonna be hard to record to calculate because of the whole illegal stream shit yeah you know I will not say if if I am contributing to the illegal stream. Um, I'm con contributing to the fight. Oh, I'm watching it. You're going to pay for it? Yeah. So you, ha you heard it here first. Noah is going to pay for it. That's one pay-per-view, Dana White. So you got yeah. you have one in the books for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I will not say whether or not I have <laughs> contributed to the illegal streams industry or not, but I will say that it is more easy than you think to find yeah. the streams. <laughs> Just go it on is Reddit, folks. Hey, whoa, you know, whoa, relax. <laughs> let's not, let's not out ourselves here. Um, so, um, I might, ble I might bleep that out in the yeah. edit. Um, yeah, it's easier than you think, but um, I think the pay per views are they're gonna show something. They're gonna be big for sure. But um, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be the biggest fight of all time. Yeah, it's gonna be a great fight. People are thinking that it's gonna either be a McGregor first round knockout or if or it'll just go to decision and Khabib will win. Yeah. But um I'm not sure that'll be the that'll be the case. I think that it's actually gonna be one of the most evenly matched fights of all time. Yeah. As exactly. in like it could be back and forth. Yeah. Like very. um I think McGregor's gonna he's gonna like tap him up because McGregor's got the best striking yeah. in the division at the moment. But I think Khabib's gonna get a couple takedowns and it's gonna be Yeah, definitely it's gonna be back and forth where it's it, he's gonna get him down, you know, it's gonna stand back up, the round might end. I think it might go five rounds, um, and just be a war. Like remember the the Nate Diaz McGregor two, like that was just a war for five rounds straight. I think it's gonna be something along the lines of that. But um, I'm completely fine with that happening. Yeah, it should be a great fight. Mm -hmm. and, did you um, see uh, what Khabib said? What he wants to do after the fight? What did he say? He said that he's poss if he wins that he wants to retire. If he wins, he'll. Ret I don't yeah. think that he'll retire. That's uh, that's what that's what he's saying. It's a huge payday, and he probably could retire after this fight. I don't know how much he's gonna make, but he definitely won't make as much as McGregor, for sure. Definitely not. But I think he he could be balling out of control with the money that he can make yeah. in this fight. But I doubt he'll retire. I don't well, he said that. like he wants to uh, have the legacy that Mayweather has in boxing. He said so, that he wants to retire yeah, undefeated. undefeated. Yeah, after beating the pay the the cover boy for the UFC. That's what he says that he wants. I see where he's coming from. Yeah. Um, the difference is though, Mayweather fought fifty times. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um, I'm not like dogging on Khabib's. Um, yeah, UFC is a completely different game, though. It's definitely different. You can't fight as often. No. Especially the way that 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 you fight in MMA. Like Mayweather took no damage. Yeah. In basically, his entire career. But um, twenty six and zero. He's twenty six and zero right now. I yeah, think. right now. So if he wins, he'll be twenty seven and zero. Mm -hmm. If he wins, I, I can't see him retiring. Honestly. No, I can't. No, he, he'll definitely he definitely won't. But it's crazy that this like there's an article on it that I'm re reading right now. That's interesting. I think that I'd be super surprised if he never fought again after this because he'll if he beats McGregor, there'll be um, a possibility they could fight again. I just see so much money involved because if you beat McGregor, it's like you have a. You have a ticket oh, to yeah. money. He'll want a rematch 100% if you yeah. beat him. I'm sure McGregor, McGregor gets whatever he wants. Let's, yeah. let's be honest. He owns. Oh, yeah. he, he basically owns the UFC. He's got Dana White sucking well, him off. Well, after that whole incident with the bus, like, yeah. he can just come fact, back. The fact that he's yeah. back at all is ridiculous. Uh, and you see him fucking talking to Dana White at the press. Did you watch the press conference? I did, yeah. So M McGregor's, um, he's serving Dana White his whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. And Proper like, 12. Yeah. And um, at, at the stare down after the press conference, Dana White yells, "Get get Connor's belts," even yeah. though neither of them yeah. are active. Yeah. <laughs> like McGregor literally has Dana White 
attached at the peen. Oh yeah, all yeah. the time. Dana White's holding his pocket. He's sucking him off. Yeah. Bro. Um. Yeah. He basically gets whatever he wants. And McGregor wants a rematch with Khabib. I'm sure Dana White will do everything in his in his power to make oh, it yeah. happen. But uh, I can't. I can't imagine Khabib will retire. But Hopefully I'm gonna get not. into a breakdown of um what I think is gonna happen through the card. Can you bring up the fight card for me, please? I can. And just tell me what the fights are. Sugar Sean O'Malley is taken off the card, by the way. I was super disappointed to hear that. R.I.P. Greenwall. Yeah, he's he's an Aki Gaming member. But uh, he got taken off due to, I guess, some prohibited substance in one of his <clears throat> tests. Yeah. And um, it's interesting because the new um, USADA ruling that – like, changed the rule, whereas in if, – if there's a drug test – that is um that is comes comes back positive they won't come to the to the public about it until the issues resolved so until the case is resolved they won't tell anybody I about agree it. with that, that that's that's it a good makes policy, sense because yeah. you, you fuck a lot of people over oh yeah over you're ruining some, people's names yeah like if i'm like john jones like he got fucked over because they they decided that it's um that it's an unintentional a tainted supplement or whatever but like they came out and said that he that he got popped after yeah. the fight and like then you got what 15 months after later they're like yeah never mind it was unintentional yeah and but never but people still the, all they hear was oh he got popped john james yeah. is a cheater yeah so he gets fucked over and now and now they're like you know how, how many how many people got fucked over before they decided they're like oh you know maybe we should you know wait Have a little all bit. the evidence before we accuse them but anyways so Sh- sugar sean o'malley he put up posted to instagram um, a whole paragraph about how he's off the card and he'll mm. be back. Apparently, it's a tainted supplement. They sent him some dietary su- supplement. Do you know what it was exactly? No, he didn't say. But um, people were saying it was THC. THC. Yeah. Apparently, that's what my brothers were saying. That I didn't know that you could get banned from that. It's um. There's a rule. It's like you get 48 hours. You can't. You can't okay. smoke within 48 hours of your fight. Okay. So I don't see how that would be the thing. I'm they, pretty sure. Yeah, they probably his, told me all the information then. Yeah, on his Instagram, he said that it was a diet that they they suspect it's a dietary supplement. Okay. So they sent. The, so, so he sent the open package that he's been taking and a closed package for testing. And yeah. apparently, it takes like 30 days for really? that to okay. get back. But um, it's just shitty because he gets taken off the yeah, card. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I was excited. To, I was excited to watch that. Yeah, I'm fight. always excited to watch Sean O'Malley. Um, yeah, but we'll get into the breakdown now. What's the What's the first fight? Start on the, the on the start early at the bottom on the main start at the main event. very bottom right on the main Lef- event. Okay, Ma- main card. Uh, Michelle Waterson and Felice Herrig. Um, this one I don't even really have a pick for this one. I don't want to pick it because I think it's gonna be close. I think I think this one could be as close as a split decision in mm-hmm. the end. It's gonna go to decision. I think, um, I don't know too too much about Felice Herrig, but I know Michelle Waterson is she's she's quite good. She's yeah, quite she's good. fifteen and six. Yeah, and Felice Herrig I think's favorite. Fourteen and seven actually. No, M- Michelle Waterson's seventy percent favorite. Okay, okay. So Michelle Waterson's favorite. I think it's gonna be close, like a split decision. Mm-hmm. I'll take I'll take Michelle Waterson via split decision win. Next. Pardon. What's the next one? Uh, Derek Lewis and Alexander Volkov. Alexander Volkov. <laughs> Derek he's, Lewis. He's a giant. Alexander Volkov super tall, super yeah. rangy. And Derek Lewis, um the thing is, is I think that I think that if Derek Lewis can't get it done in the first round, that Volkov's gonna come away with it. Because Volkov's uh he's he's a good kickboxer mm-hmm. and he's got definitely more endurance than Derek Lewis does. Derek Lewis is not in any way known for his endurance. No, not at all. And um Alexander Volkov, I think I'm gonna give it to Volkov. Oh via, yeah, he beats him in every category. Um, I think I'm gonna get give it to Volkov via decision as well. Yeah. I'm gonna give that Volkov decision. Next one. Ovince Saint Peru. Oh, OSP against Dominic Reyes, yep. right? Um, yep. Dominic Reyes is nine and zero. He's an up and comer, but um, I think OSP takes this one honestly. I think OSP is gonna beat him via su- submission in the second round. Ospi's a he's a good submission artist in the way he you know he's got decent decent grappling, but Donna Grace is is new and I think OSP is sort of I don't want to call him a gatekeeper because mm-hmm. that's kind of an insult in this day and age, but I think that he's just kind of like an in betweener between yeah. the upper echelon and the mid tier type um, fighters. I just think that he's like in between, as in he's not yet at the upper echelon. But yeah. I think that he he always he tends to beat all the people who 
who don't belong in the upper echelon. So like people who are coming up, yeah, he seen, he weans out the the lower end um, fighters. I'm not yeah. even saying that Dominic Reyes is lower end. I just think that OSP he's got the he's got a high, much higher experience. Obviously, yeah, he's got they're on two completely wins. different playing fields. He's got like 18 wins, I think. OSP. Uh, 23 23 okay yeah, 23, 23 and 11 and then dominic raise is 9 and 0 um i i want to get like i don't want to get specific but I, I mean i'd like to say osp via oh, yeah. v, via von Peru choke in the second round but i'm going to give it to osp via via submission in the second yeah. round yeah i've never seen dominic raise fight so yeah he's new he's new yeah uh next is the anthony pettis card yeah anthony right? ferguson anthony pettis tony tony ferguson we've I'm actually huge... seen anthony pettis fight live yeah, I saw him fight Max Holloway. He broke his hand in the yep. first, and he said his first strike. He broke his hand. Yeah, the first strike hit in Toronto. But um, I honestly, I'm I'm high on the Anthony Pettis bandwagon right now. Oh yeah, Showtime. Yeah, I think Showtime could be back because like the way he fought Michael Chiesa, he just looks so solid. Yeah, like he ended up winning by rear naked choke in that one. But um, that being said, Tony Ferguson is a force. And yeah, like, he really is. There's so many question marks in this fight because it's like t- Anthony Pettis looks really good, but he hasn't fought anybody on Tony Ferguson's level in yeah. a while. Um, and Tony Ferguson's coming off a huge, huge, severe injury, and he had to get a surgery to get his knee put back together. Really? And um, yeah, he, he ripped that shit in half. Um, a scar like fucking 12 inches long on his leg. God damn. And Tony Ferguson, um, I think honestly, I'm just gonna have to give it to Tony Ferguson via submission as well in the second round tony ferguson via submission in the second round i just think that tony ferguson um regardless of the injury i think his ground game is just too phenomenal he's good on he's good at every facet of mma yeah so um yeah i'm gonna give it to tony ferguson via submission in the second round and next we have obviously we have the biggest fight of all time the best fight ever um khabib versus mcgregor the thing with this fight that makes it interesting is both fighters. We everybody knows what both fighters Bring game to plans the table, are. Yeah, but they they have a set game plan, and um, Khabib's game plan obviously is Just get him right to the ground. Don't strike. Take him down, and you know, wear him down, and um, and you know, break his will on the ground. And yeah. McGregor's game plan is obviously keep your distance and force him to strike with you because yeah. let's be honest, he can't strike with him. Yeah, like I'm looking right here at the submissions for each person, and Connor has no stats under he has submissions. No submission wins. Yeah. Yeah, and then Khabib's very impressive in in the gr- yeah, in his, his ground, ground game, game is the best I think the UFC's ever seen. Oh yeah, and um, the thing with with Khabib though is people act people like who are on Khabib's bandwagon they just say that Khabib is he's obviously the best he's the best on the ground that we've ever seen but they but they say that McGregor has um has no ground game so like mcgregor has a weaker ground game and yeah. khabib has weak striking yeah but i would say that the gap between mcgregor's um striking and khabib's striking is bigger than the gap between khabib's ground game yeah. and mcgregor's ground game yeah so like it's literally just whoever can impose their game plan better as in like khabib i i don't think should even throw a punch standing really like, unless you don't think he will I think he will. He'll yeah. probably because you you have to you have to like throw feints and you have to throw punches to try and try and get the takedown. But like, who are you kidding? Like, yeah. No one. No. Like yeah. you're not you're not gonna outstrike McGregor. Yeah, he's the best striker in the in the, in the UFC for yeah. sure. Um. So yeah, I think that like I said earlier, I think it's gonna be like a five round war. Yeah. Um. But I think I think if I'm gonna make a like a call, if like if I'm a betting man, which I am. Yep. If I'm gonna make bets and I and I have to bet on if I if I have a gun to my head make the bet whatever's gonna pay the most yep. I think I take McGregor first round knockout yeah hundred percent that's on my on that's if I'm betting if I'm gonna like play what I think the storyline is gonna be for how the fight's gonna go down I would say it's gonna be a decision yeah but if I have to bet on it I would say McGregor takes it first round knockout yeah. not to mention he's an underdog yeah that's insane I, I wasn't I wasn't ready to see that eighty seven percent for Khabib. Yeah, that's that's a little high. Yeah. Like I like I was saying, I said in my last podcast, um, if they if they fight a hundred times, I think McGregor wins like 50, 50 something times. Yeah, fifty. I said fifty one. That might yeah. be a little bit closer. I think maybe like fifty two, fifty three times, fifty five times. Yeah, it's that close. That's how close yeah. this fight is. Um, I think that literally the Vegas line should be a pick 'em. It should be literally minus one fifteen. Yeah, for Khabib or minus twenty minus one twenty five for Khabib minus one fifteen for McGregor. Mm-hmm. That's how close this fight is, in my opinion. 
Um, I'm just so excited. Like it's literally yeah. like the Super Bowl. Yeah, literally. I'm yeah. more excited for this than I am excited for Christmas morning. Yeah. <laughs> this is literally the yeah. biggest fucking event I've ever, I'm yeah. ever gonna watch on TV. I'm so fucking excited. Um, like I was pumped for the Mayweather uh, McGregor, but like this is like a whole new level. Yeah, the Mayweather McGregor fight, I was super pumped for it, but yeah, I already was, knew what was gonna happen. I knew happen, exactly yeah. what was gonna happen. But um, yeah. So now we're gonna get. I think we can get to some current events. Yep. You got some current events for me. I do. How uh, Bill Cosby spent his first week in prison. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you told me about this one before. Yeah. Read me the article. Tell me how he, how he spent his week. All right. Uh, we're told from uh, the prison that uh, Cosby is escorted through Phoenix by a personal guide. Bill's legally blind to use the prison's library, yard, and other facilities. Dinner and lunch are either in his cell or in an open room. So he's pretty much uh by himself the whole time he's not having any uh face time with anyone besides the guards so are they trying to protect him or something like some like someone's yeah, gonna try much, and yeah. Oh, yeah yeah the thing with him going away like um i haven't talked about this on the podcast yet but he, he went away for three to ten years yeah um i don't know what that means i don't know like if they think good behavior is a thing he's 71 he's yeah. not gonna incite violence or start a prison mm-hmm. riot like um but um yeah if he i think he's gonna like i don't think he makes it out of prison alive i don't think that he's gonna die like as like if kid. he was put in gen pop he's he's probably he's probably getting shanked oh, <laughs> i don't know i don't know if anybody's gonna shank him regardless of what like what he did which is terrible mm-hmm. like he's an awful awful guy but like yeah. i don't think that um anybody's gonna shank him like he's literally like in a lot of people's eyes like like a father yeah, de- uh, yeah, definitely. I don't think that anybody's gonna shank him. I think yeah. that he'll die from old age because he's yeah. just not looking good. He's looks he he's looked way better in his life. Like oh yeah, both of his eyes are like yeah. slouching into his head, and he they're they're they got minds of their own. They're just looking every which yeah. way. Yeah, he's definitely not his uh his usual self. But I'm not I'm not surprised though. I'm not surprised that uh they have him like basically doing everything they yeah. want him to do. They're yeah, trying to protect himself. him. Oh yeah, I guess. But like, or just make him go insane or something. <laughs> Could you imagine? I right, Tom. I think it was Tom Segura posted an Instagram post, and it's like, "Damn, I didn't know." Um, or damn, um, Bill Cosby's adapting to prison life, um, very quickly, and it's yeah. really a picture of Bill Cosby with like XXX Tintasion's <laughs> hair photoshopped onto him, and he's face got tats- face tattoos and shit. <laughs> and I fucking died. Um, oh my god! All right, what else you got for me? Um, what else do you want to hear? I sent you some via text message. Let me look it up. Don't keep the folks uh, listen to this dead air. Keep them uh, entertained. So Noah doesn't have any current events for me at the ready. I don't know what I paid yeah. him for. Yeah, seriously. Oh, Johnny Hendricks fighting for World Bare Knuckle uh, Fighting Federation. Have you watched the Bare Knuckle? I've seen a video fights? of you. I have not seen anything from. I've it. seen a video. And I the tr- only reason I watched a uh-huh. video of it because I wanted to see bloodshed. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> because um, literally, like, w- why else you watch? Like, if you want to just like see like phenomenal fighting, like you might as well just watch fucking MMA or boxing. yeah, or boxing. Yeah. Because like these aren't like the highest level fighters in the in the world fighting for bare. They're just going for knockouts and. <laughs> That's literally what it is. Trying to break someone's face open. And it's literally it's it's a bloodbath. It's it's uh exactly as you'd expect it to be, but um Johnny Hendricks, you know. He's not getting any younger, and I honestly would like to see him retired. I wouldn't. I, I don't. When people said hang up the gloves, I guess he just listened and took it literally, and now he's just gonna yeah. fight with that one. <laughs> but um, it's called the WBKFF. Yep. Um, doesn't roll off the tongue. I don't know if you. Yeah, if like I, I, I was kind of stuttering trying to say it to you, reading it off the phone. Yeah, like it makes. It, I don't know if they want any followers or something, but it doesn't really <laughs> roll off the tongue at all. But uh, I'd I'd like to see Johnny Hendricks maybe you know take a seat from the fight game for a while maybe yeah. do something else because he's he's like he's in it he's uh, he's past his prime to say the least yeah definitely all right what else you got uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder venue set I don't know who either of those people are but you don't know who Tyson Fury is I don't know let me look it up all right Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury they're um. Their fight for December 1st has been, their venue's been set for LA, I believe, at the Staples Center. Okay. This is going to be, like, probably the biggest heavyweight boxing fight of the year. 
Okay. It's boxing, okay? Yeah, it's boxing. And uh, the winner, I don't know if you've heard of Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua, yep. Yeah, so he just fought like two weekends ago in Wembley. And the winner of the Deontay Wilder and and uh, Tyson Fury fight um, fights Anthony Joshua apparently at April 13th. Okay. In, like at Wembley again. Okay, yeah. And um, basically the thing is, is Deontay Wilder's like the biggest heavyweight boxer in the States, right? He's like the the best, like the most popular American boxer in the world right now. Okay, yeah. And then you got Anthony Joshua, who's like a superstar in Britain. So like what they're trying to do. Yeah, it says right here, Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn are, has been talked uh, with the American over the potential for a super fight to decide the undisputed world heavyweight champion. Yeah, because Anthony Joshua, I think, has like three or four belts okay. right now. Yeah, and yeah. Deontay Wilder has one. And what they want to do is try and unify them in like a, um, a super fight, I guess, is what you just said. And Deontay Wilder, you know, being the biggest American boxer. And Anthony Joshua, by far, being bringing like the, the British superstar. Like, he's literally a god in, in Britain. Like, if you like if you would like watch the fight yeah. on the zone two weekends ago, Anthony Joshua is literally like he's he's a, he's a rock star. In um, to those British fans, and like I'm so fucking turned for this fight yeah. that, like the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight is gonna be a great fight to start to begin with already. But Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, if that fight happens, that's gonna be like one of the best fights in the last ten years, in my opinion. Yeah, like um, yeah, it's just gonna be fucking ridiculous because there's like literally both guys have incredible knockout power. And both guys, you know, both guys are undefeated to say the least. Deontay Wilder is 40 and 0, 39 knockouts. And really? Anthony Joshua, I think it's like 26 and 0, 20, 25 knockouts or something like that. And he just knocked out Povetkin two weeks ago. And um, yeah, I'm just fucking, I'm so pumped to see um, Tyson, first of all, Tyson Fury, he's no walk in the park. Yeah. So, like, he's also like a phenomenal boxer. I think he's Irish. And he's fighting Deontay Wilder in LA now. That fight should be should be amazing, um, but I think I'm I'm hoping Deontay Wilder wins just for the storyline against Anthony Joshua April thirteenth, and um, but I'm guessing the winner I think the winner will fight Anthony Joshua regardless. But I'd yeah. like to see Deontay Wilder fight him just because of the the whole American versus Britain storyline. Yeah. All right. What else you got? What else? That's it. That's all you sent me. Is that actually all I sent you? Yeah. Alrighty, so um, how long have we been going at this? 46 minutes, just past it. Alright, I think that should do it for the podcast today. Um, it's a good job. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed doing the podcast today. Um, follow me on Twitter uh, at Ryan underscore N-I-K-O-S-E-Y. Noah, where can they find you? Uh, on Twitter at Noah Nova. Noah Nova no, with two A's. Two A's. No N- space. N O A H N O V A A. Yeah. On Twitter, you can tweet at me. You can comment on. Yeah. Give us the, topics to talk yeah, about. Give me some topics, whatever you want me to talk about. You can ask me questions. I'll bring them up. Um, yeah, just uh, drop a like, comment, and subscribe to me on YouTube. Check me out on SoundCloud. If you fuck with listening to it in the car, on your commute, whatever. This is also going to be up on Apple Podcasts. Um, I'm trying to get them up as soon as possible after I record them, but it takes a little bit longer for Apple Podcasts. But um, yeah, I appreciate you all for listening to the podcast. And I don't really yet have, I don't have an outro for this shit yet, but um, you know, we'll figure it out. But ne- but I'll try to get the podcast done for Friday. I know I said I'm going to do it Monday and Friday. Today is Tuesday again. But um, Friday, I'm hoping, is going to be the next one. And I hope Noah's going to stay with us here. And he's going to do the production and looking shit up for me. And I want to thank you all for listening. And um, we'll see you Friday morning. Thank you, fuckers. Thanks for tuning in.